All right. Hello there, THP 494 and 598. Matthew here. So I wanted to backtrack a little bit here first. I want to make sure that I have a record of what we talked about last week, and I haven't put that up yet. So I wanted to do that first here to make sure we had this uh, kind of held on to for posterity and as you head into your final projects. And one of the first things we actually talked about in class was we talked about dictionaries and lists. Um, and we've done a little bit of uh, Python goodness in this process, and we've certainly talked about data structures here in Touch Designer. Um, but this is really an opportunity for us to dig in a little bit and really start to pull apart some of the meat of the kinds of things that uh, really make um, Python really powerful for us here in Touch Designer. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of what that means. So I'm going to make a new base. Actually, I'm going to zoom out here of this project because we're going to do several things. So we'll just keep using this project as we go along. I'm going to make a new base and I'm going to call this uh, LD for lists and dictionaries. And let's take a look in here and let's start to just pull apart a couple of these ideas. So the first thing that we might start to pull apart, right, the, that we might start to kind of wrap our heads around is how we form a list. Now we've certainly looked at lists, we've seen what those look like in uh, different operators, right? So for example, if we grabbed a constant, uh, and if our constant happened to be one pixel by one pixel, excellent. And if we used our evaluate dat, and if we did our handy dandy little operation here where we said um, we want to look at constant one con oh my goodness constant I don't think I spelled that right constant one oh my goodness I'm striking out okay constant one and I want to sample constant one, and I need to give this an x and a y coordinate, right? This should look familiar, x equals zero, y equals zero. Great, we can see that we've got a list here that's uh, 1.0, 1.0, 1.0, 1.0, 1 and if I was to change any of these values, right, we'd see that that changes. It corresponds uh, to what's going on there. And you might say, Matt, that's all well and good, but I don't understand how you know that it's a list. Uh, so let's actually go ahead and bring up our text port and dats. And instead of just evaluating it here, let's use a text dat and let's print out that same uh, value, right? So we're just going to copy that and paste that right in here. And we're just going to print this instead. So we're going to use a good old fashioned print command to print this out and that'll show up over here in our text port. So when we run this script, we see that we've got these parentheses and this is part of the reason that I know that it's a list. It's kind of held inside of this um, one value after another which is excellent. Lists are really great things. And in fact, if we wanted to build our own list, we could certainly do that. Let's add a text at here. And we could say, we might call something my list. Um, and my list is going to be equal to, in this case, we're going to use square brackets. And then we can put as many different values as we like in here. We could say 0 0.1, comma 1, 0, 0.0. These can be floats, integers, or strings, 1. Uh, and we could even put in something like apple. Right, and for fun games and profit, let's go ahead and print that. So let's print my list. Great, so if we run this we can now see, lo and behold, there we've got uh, 0 0.1, 1 1.01, and Apple all held inside of this lovely little list. That's great. We can also extract values from a list. Um, so for example, if we want to pull these out of here, we could just say uh, that instead of just printing my list, I want to print, print um, the object or the item that's at a particular index in my list. And so in this case, maybe what I want to do is I just want to print apple, and that's in the 0, 1, 2, 3 position. So I like to print just the thing that's in the 3 position. So we should see both the whole list be printed, as well as just um, the item in the number 3 index. So let's go ahead and run our script again. And sure enough, there we go. 
Now we also know that works over here, right? So that if I um, if I have this guy right here, I could actually just go ahead and print out a particular index of this. So if I wanted uh, the item that was just in the three position, for example, so that's in the XY, or excuse me, the RGBA slot, this number one value. Let's go ahead and clear this over here and let's run that again. So we can see we get just 1.0. Okay, well that's all well and good, Matt, but why do I even care about that? Well, we care about that because we can start to take advantage of lists uh, when we start to work with our storage. Um, and it's a really great way to move around information. So let's go ahead and start to think about what that might look like. Um, so, for example, let's imagine uh, that we have a table and I'm going to use a table right now because uh, building a whole mechanism for storing this isn't necessarily really easy. But we can start to think about how we might compare these kinds of things, right? So for example, uh, we might have a table and in our table uh, we might imagine that we have a couple different things inside of it. Uh, we might have a position, right? So we might have like uh, one position and this might have four values that are associated with it, right? Like R, G, B, and A. So this might be 1.0, 1.0, and this would be tabs. Good. Um, zero, and, and we should make the 0, 0.0, and 1.0 again. And sure enough, there we see it uh, shows up just like we would like it to. We might imagine that we've got another state in here. We've got the two state. And this might have different values, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.25, and 0 0.8. And one way that we might think about this is we might start to think about this in terms of queues, right? Like we might have a queuing system that we're building that's all pulling information from a table. Now that's Excellent, that's a great way to work with things, and in fact, tables are one of the most reliable ways that we can actually start to build um, systems for extracting values, holding values, and coming back to them. But we can also start to think about how we might use storage for this particular purpose. And so what I want us to do is I want us to imagine that this table is just standing in here right now for a set of four sliders. So really what I have is I have four sliders, right? And those four sliders, uh, I have another button that's attached to that called record. So I actually want to record the values of these things inside of my storage rather than inside of a table. So let's go ahead and drop down and examine that because we're going to find that really handy. Uh, and in our operator, we're going to use dot dot to mean look at my parent because we're going to put all of this in our parent storage. And now we need to start to think about how do we actually write uh, a method for sticking all of this into storage, right? Because we could certainly do this a very kind of complicated old-fashioned way. We could kind of do it a rote way, right? Or we could say slider position one is equal to all of these things. And slider position, this should be two, is equal to uh, all of these values, right? So in this case, uh, table two, and this should be table one, pardon me. So we're going to look at table one. And we can, we'll actually go through the rigmarole of making this work, right? So table one in the row zero in the column uh, one, and this should increment one, two, three, four, and again in column one, two, three, and four, right? So these are a whole list. And we might imagine that we're going to say that we want to me dot parent dot store, and we want to store all of this uh, under something, under a name, right? And the name we might want to use might be uh, slider slider position one, and we want to go ahead and put slider position one into that item in storage. Oof. All right, well, that's uh, not miserable, but it certainly isn't fun to write this all out uh, this way. And this certainly doesn't seem any faster, right? If we were to copy all of this 
And let's add a text stat. We should be able to see that if we run this script, oh, we've got an error. I love it. Parnet, <laughs> excuse me, parent. Oh, and sure enough, I'm indented here, and I shouldn't be indented. Again, pardon me. This guy shouldn't be indented. Let's fix all this. OK. I've just put this on separate lines so it's easier to see. You doesn't, don't necessarily have to do that. This is just a great way, I think, to be able to visually see what's going on here. OK. So now if you run this script, oh, good. I misspelled slider, slider, position one, splider, oops, <laughs> slider, position two. OK. Third time's a charm. There we go. Run that script. And sure enough, there we've got slider position one, slider position two. And we've stored these guys. And we've put them into our storage. Now, that's all well and good. But that is certainly a miserable way uh, to make changes, especially if it means that every time I add a row to this table, that I've got to go through that rigmarole again. That's, uh, that doesn't save me any time. That costs me time. Uh, and that's a terrible way to work. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually think about how can we structure this in a way that rather than using this big longhand way of doing this particular operation, we can write a for loop to do this for us. And then it doesn't matter how long or how many rows we have in this particular table, that we'll just blast our way through all of them incrementally. OK, so let's start by taking this stuff out of storage. So we can see if this is working or not. And we can use the expression me.parent.unstore. And our asterisk there means everything. So that should blast storage out there. So let's for one second, let's look at what this is. And let's think about how for loops work. And before, well, actually, let's, uh, well, yeah, let's start here. First, let's realize that we have a couple things that recur here, right? So for starters, I've got this value, right? Slider position one, slider position two. These things increment, right? We could imagine that if there was another row in this particular table, that it would be slider position three, slider position four, and so on. We can also see that these values, the row values, uh, again, correspond to an increment for every time we go through this. So slider 1 is in the 0 position, slider 2 is in the 1 position, slider 3 would be in the 2 position, etc. So if we were to make a bunch of these, we would uh, see a pattern in all of that. And that is exactly what we're after, is understanding what this pattern means, so we can start to pull apart how we might exploit that. So for a hot second, let's take a look at just a really simple for loop. So we're going to add a uh, text uh, dot here. And let's um, do just a really simple, simple loop. And what we're going to do is we're going to just go ahead and, and we're going to give this, uh, we're going to add a number, let's say 10, right? And we're going to say 4n. And this could be any stand-in. I'm just using n because it's going to be uh, an easy way to think about number. So 4n in the range of number. And we're using range because it uh, gives us a starting point and an ending point. Colon, print, hello. So what I want to do is for every time we go through uh, our loop here, we're going to print hello. So if we run this, we should see, 
lo and behold, I did something wrong. Excellent. Oh, that's because I used uh, number instead of num. Excuse me. So these two are matching. So let's run our script here, and we should see hello printed out 10 times. So what's happening? So what we're doing is as we increment through uh, the range of starting at 0 and going to 10, we're printing out hello, and then we do that again. So we might, for example, we could look at that a different way. Let's uh, give, our, give, our, give ourselves a value. So let's say that our value is 0. And what we want to do is we are going to print out value, right? We're going to print out val. That's the first thing we're going to do. And then we're going to take val, and we're going to plus equal 1. We're going to add 1 to it. So the first time we go through the, our loop, we should see 0. And then we'll add 1, and then we'll print it again. And then we'll add 1, and we'll print it again, and we'll add 1. So let's run our script here. Val, oops, <laughs> lo and behold, that's because I put it in quotes. Oh, let's fix that. <laughs> All right, let's try one more time. So let's run our script here, and 0 through 9. Now, what's interesting to point out is that it's important to know where in this our add statement is, our plus equal statement. If, for example, we were to do this first, so let's go ahead and take this guy out of here and put them in here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add one first and then we're going to print out val. So now we should see 1 to 10 as our numbers. Right? Lo and behold, 1 to 10. It's important to remember that whenever we're working with a program, whenever we're writing a program, we're really just writing a set of instructions. We're giving our application a set of rules that it's going to abide by and how it's going to abide by those rules. Okay, so if with our for loops we can see that we increment every time through, and that's based on an increasing number based in a range, we can start to think about how we can exploit that particular property to take advantage of how we want to actually automate a bunch of this. And rather than having to do another one of these entries for every row, we can instead think about how we can write an abstract way to accomplish that same uh, need without having all of these entries. Okay, so let's go ahead and add another text stat. And let's start to think about what that might look like. Okay, so let's, for starters, um, let's do ourselves a favor. And rather than having to reference the operator every time, let's just go ahead and give the, uh, give the operator a variable name. So we might call that slider position. And that's going to be equal to the operator that's called table one. Okay, so first things first, we've decided what, uh, how we're going to refer to table one. Okay, next we're going to start our for loop. So for i, and again, this can be any um, stand-in, right? Any variable. So for i in the range of slider position dot num rows. So we're going to look at the number of rows. That's going to define how many times we run our for loop. We're going to do the following. And you'll notice that I use a colon to indicate that the for loop is starting. And then everything inside of the loop needs to be indented. So I'm going to build a list. And I'm going to go ahead and use an open bracket to start. And then I want to start with a float. I'm going to make a float out of the slider position that is, in this case, in the row i. All right, matching here in row i and in column 1. All right, I'm going to go ahead and use a comma to specify that we're moving on to the next puppy. I'm just going to go ahead and copy this. Paste, paste, paste. So we're going to start with column 1, then column 2, then column 3, then column 4. Right? 1, 2, 3. Four. When all that's said and done, I'm going to go ahead and close my list. I don't need any more. And then I want to say that uh, I want to put this into storage. So me dot parent dot store. And I want to go ahead and call this slider position. And I want to. 
um, to that string, right, the name that I'm giving it, I want it to be slider position, and then I want to use i. I'm going to make a string out of i. So in this first time through, it's 0. I'm going to add 1 to that. So that means the first time through, it's slider position 1, then slider position 2, then slider position 3. So that's the key that I've created here. And then finally, list is the thing that I'm putting into storage, right? So this list goes into storage. I blast through this loop again, and I reuse all of this abstract way of writing this um, particular problem. And we put another thing into storage. All right, so now we should be able to right click on this and run our script. And excellent, we've got an error uh, in line nine. Where did we go wrong? Ah. Of course, excuse me, we did never close these parentheses. Silly me. There we are. Right, because I need to put this whole operation is encapsulated. So now we should be able to run this, and lo and behold, there we go, slider position 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.25, 0 0.8. So we might imagine that uh, we could actually come through here and let's edit the contents of this table. And let's add another row. So uh, row 3 might be uh, 0 0.23, 0 0.58, 0 0.1, and 1. Oops. Great, so there it is. We could run our script here again, and there, lo and behold, it's stuck right in there. So it doesn't matter how many rows we have here, this is going to go ahead and do that operation. We might also think about the fact that this could be written even more abstractly. So rather than relying on a table, again, we might have that set of sliders, and every time we hit that record button, we increment the value that's associated with this number here, and then we go ahead and um, dump that into storage. Now, if we want to retrieve this from storage, uh, we can extract this uh, with an expression. So let's go ahead and use and evaluate that to see what we might do to do that. So we could say that we want to me.fetch. And from storage, I want to go ahead and extract slider position 1. And out of slider position 1, in square brackets, I indicate the index position. So in this case, uh, let's go ahead and grab 3. So if we grab the three item out, we can see that that's one. If I change this to slider position two, we can see that I jumped to two. And again, we could bump this to three, and bada bing, bada boom, we're in three. So that's a great way for us to start to think about how we can start to work with and understand lists, and how we can actually build lists, and then put them into storage. Okay, we'll stop there and then we'll start again. We'll pick back up thinking about dictionaries.